Hey, welcome to the Glenn Gower Podcast, the best podcast you'll listen to all day. <laughs> Sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Is the devil real? I mean, really real. Now, the Bible tells us that Satan, the devil, came to kill, steal, and destroy. If these things are happening to you, such as the death of relationships, reputations being destroyed, grace is stolen because um, you can't get to church, and on and on and on, in a variety of ways, then yes, he is real. But what might be worse is if nothing is happening to you spiritually. That could mean he, the devil, already has you in his grip, and you don't even know it. Now, Satan's problem is when you depart his kingdom. Then all hell breaks loose. Yes, putting spiritual paganism behind me was the best decision I've ever made. Today in this show, we will discuss the reality of Satan as we discuss the second step in being possessed, oppression. Dr. Dennis, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I love this intro. It's like... Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> this is great. This I, is Lord of the Rings, baby. I love it. I love it. So, uh, Are I'll... you feeling oppressed today? No, I'm feeling great. Is depressed the same as oppressed? Uh, a little bit different, but they're similar. Yeah, I would agree that sometimes the, the depression is the mental block. It's the mental block, yeah. Of what you perceive is the oppression surrounding you. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Interesting topic. I'm looking forward to yeah. this. Yeah. Well, I first want to get into this. Is Satan real? No. Deal. No, he's not real. He's made up. He's like Bugs Bunny. He's just, you know, Tasmanian devil. It's just a name. He's just a little cute guy. Yeah, just a cute little guy. Yeah. You love him and hug him. He just needs love. Yeah, a little pitchfork. Yeah. He just he's pokes just, you a little he's bit. Little. He sits on your shoulder, talks to you and whispers in your ear. He's got your best interest in mind. Uh, this is a... St- some statistics. Now, this is nine years ago. I think this could have changed. I couldn't find anything recent. I suspect there are things that are recent. But nine years ago, uh, I went to YouGov. Question, do you personally believe in the existence of the devil or not? What do you think? Don't look. What do you think? What percentage of those polled, 1,800 and some people polled, personally believe in the devil or the existence of the devil? Today or nine years ago? This is nine years ago. I know the the number is higher, so I'm going to say 30%. So you think it is higher today? No, I think it's lower today. Okay, 57% of people polled do uh, believe in the existence of a devil. So uh, 43% do not believe in a devil or a demon. Okay. That's pretty high. Next question was, go to the next page. Do you believe someone can be possessed by the devil or some other evil spirit? What's your guess? Well, if 57% of people say yes. Deduction reasoning here. Good. I'm going to say 60%. 51%. 51%. Okay. 51%. So that's a lot of people that do not believe you can be possessed by the devil. And how often do you think people are possessed by the devil according to you, Gov? Ooh. Very frequently, frequently, occasionally, rarely, or never. So I would say occasionally. Occasionally, 29%. Uh, the big one was rarely, 45%. And never. So they're there, but it doesn't really happen. Yeah, never comes in at 11%. Uh, very. So you believe f- there's a devil, but 11% of the people say, no, it's not possible to be yeah. possessed. Yeah, right. So That's interesting. Rarely and never make up 56%, which is about right. Seems about right. Um. I don't know if there's anything else I want to go over, but I think the point is, here's a belief in exorcism. Um, Yes. So the question is, yes, I believe in the power of exorcisms. No, I don't believe in the power of exorcisms and some don't know. So 46% believe in the power of exorcism. Well, 19% do not. Okay. So this was from nine years ago. Okay. So what do you think? You think stats are different today? Oh yeah. How much different do you think? I would bet that number is cut by half. You think um, 26% believe in the existence of the devil, or do you think... Yeah, I would say half the number of people that believed in the devil before, there's half as many. But the world's become darker. But are people even aware? Did you see the Super Bowl halftime show 2021? Mm, No. I'm, I'm not sure if you should go watch it. 
uh, and I, I love that foot- was the one with the two girls, right? No, it wasn't. Um, you know, I'm not really in the music world anymore. I don't, re- don't pay attention to pop music. I don't remember who the stars. I've never seen the stars before. So this would have been back in February this year. No, no, 2021. 2021, two years ago. Yeah. Okay. It was bizarre. Really? I mean, it was, I would use the word demonic even. It wow. was so weird. Uh, I can't re- re- recommend you watch it, but um, I just remember thinking, Satan has got his stage. I mean, this is his center stage here. And I remember thinking also, I think more people believe in him than not. Yeah. So he's, I think, become more and more powerful in the last several years. And maybe that's a better question of, yeah. do you, because the question is, do you believe in the devil? I don't know that people would outright say, yeah, I believe in the devil. Like, as a bad guy, because you say devil, bad guy. I would just say the way that it's been glamorified and glorified the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the Nicolas Cage's movies, um, Ghost Rider, things like that. We've just Hollywood, you know, we've just turned them into Hollywood and, well, it's just a story. It can't be real. And people forget there's more truth in fiction than we really realize. That's right. It's interesting because Satan seems like another option. Oh, it's always ha- it always has been. Yeah, but another good option. Well, it's... <laughs> It can it can look good on the outside. You bet. Up here, while we were living our life, absolutely. Yeah. If you read some of the comments from last week's podcast, yeah, it's very interesting. That's 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 where this is coming from. Okay. Yeah, there's someone saying that you know if you follow Satan, you don't have to give ten percent, and he will always answer your prayers. <laughs> and that's probably true. But what do you have to pay if you don't pay ten percent? What are you giving up at the end? Well, I you think always pay. There's always a Something to pay. <laughs> you're going to pay. You're going to pay the price. There's no doubt about that. I think in the West, the Western world, we How have... far West? Well, Western Europe. Oh, not Rapid the West. City? No, no, no. The West. <laughs> Western Europe. West, Western... Americas, Africa. I think we're pretty much gone. In what I mean is we have embraced the idea that God is not real. There is no devil. There's nothingness. Is that what they call agnostic beliefs where it's not really relevant? It doesn't matter? I think so. I think agnosticism might be the best word. Agnosticism would say there might not be a God, but there might be something. Atheism says there's nothing at all. Yeah. And again, for those atheists out there, I understand because Christians have not represented Christianity very well. I mean, we're a lot of us Christians are baptized pagans. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, if you think about your life, my life, there's a few of us that are really trying to live, but we're in the minority. And I've read some stats that one between one and five percent of all Christians are actually trying to live out Christianity. And what does that really look like? If you if you unpack that, what is living like a Christian look like? Is it the tithing ten percent? Is it doing good deeds? Is it showing up to church every Sunday? Like, where's that checklist? Because that's what everybody wants. Yeah, they, I, they want the checklist. Yeah, they want the checklist. It's certainly all three of those. Uh, I wouldn't put tithing at the top, but it's being involved in your faith and regularly engaging in the deity, in, in God, in the Trinity. And I would say I, I would take tithing not only in the physical physical sense of what people talk about monetarily, but we talked about this before. What about 10% of your week, 168 hours a week? Yeah. How about 10% of your week that you give to Christ in the the godly things that you do? You know, that's another form of tithing because you're you're taking time away from me, myself, the things I want, the things I, I feel like I need to do, and going over here. And I can I can totally get this whole how you get oppressed and pushed down of oh, I'm just in the grind. I gotta get this done today. So let's talk more about that. Talk about what? The oppression. Oh, the oppression. Well, yeah. let's first, before we get to oppression, um, I want to give some description for those, especially for those who do not believe Satan exists, because I think some people are listening thinking, mm, I don't think he exists. So I want to provide some context. So you've heard of Genesis. Um, yeah, it's a really, really great hospital system. My son was born there in Davenport, Iowa. It's not. It's a band <laughs> oh. featuring Phil Collins. Featuring Phil Collins. Hey, I did thought, you, 
<laughs> Go ahead. I thought Phil Collins was his own thing. Well, he was after Genesis. I didn't know that he was a part of a thing. Yeah, he was the drummer, man. Oh, man. That was before my time. Do I have that right? Dude, you are Who's old. Who's the music man? Genesis chapter three. Music man. Music man was um uh, the, 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 I was going to say John Travolta, but it's not John Travolta. Uh, Judah's the music man. No. Um, are you talking Rocket again. Man? <laughs> no. That's Elton John. Elton John. Elton John's the rocket man. There you go. Okay, not the music Elton man. and Bernie. Bernie wrote that, the lyrics for it. But who is Satan? And um, just some quick background. Uh, Satan, some think he was in the second realm of angels, uh, not the cherubim, but the seraphim. Did I get that right? I always mix those two up. Cherubim, them seraphim, correct? Yeah, alphabetic order. He was a seraph, one of the seraphims. Um we don't know. I know Thomas Aquinas thinks he was one of the seraphim. And um, Lucifer is one of his uh, names, which means light or light bearer, right? Uh, we call him the angel of light. But his first characteristic, I want to talk about that because there's many of them. But the first one is given to us in Genesis chapter 3. Now, Genesis was written by Moses. The longstanding tradition was Moses. I know Modern theology wants to debate this, but I'm going with the old guys on this one. Okay. I'm going Let's with the go. guys like Augustine and Jerome who would say Moses wrote the first five books. Were they Catholic? Yeah. Okay, good. Dude, everyone was Catholic <laughs> for the first thousand years. You okay. knew that, right? No. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? No. Well, everyone was Catholic, meaning universal Christians. There was only one group. Okay. And then in 1054, the Orthodox broke away, and then we call them Orthodox, Orthodox. because they're saying... We're the Orthodox ones, and you aren't. And it wasn't over theology. It was over power between Rome and Constantinople. But 1517, uh, your forefathers broke away from Rome, which is the Protestant Reformation. Protestant, we are protesting. And really, when you think about humankind, it's all about divorce. All the way. All the way. God uh, and his people are one, Adam and Eve, divorce. Right? Yep. And each covenant maker, or really the Old Testament, is all about divorcing God. And I'm going to worship a different God. Oftentimes that's myself. But in the Old Testament, it's Baal or um, who else in the Old Testament? Oh, uh, Baal. Molech. Um, Molech is another one. Okay. So, um, and Molech or Baal would be Lucifer, right? This fallen angel who um, wants to be worshipped. So... You don't worship angels, you worship God. So anyway, let's let's look at what Moses says. Now he calls him a serpent. Now the serpent, now I'm in Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle, which also means cunning. Or crafty in my translation. Crafty is also good. Mine says subtle than any other wild creature the Lord God had made. So I'm really going off the word subtle today. Why? Why am I going off a of subtle? Why do you think? What's your best guess? Because as all things go, rarely do you get a toothache that comes on right now. You get that subtle twinge, a red flag. It hurts a little. And then the pain gets a little worse. And it becomes a little more noticeable. And it's all about the slow curve, the slow bend down a different path or a different awareness. Very subtle, Un it, unintended. Sorry, it is indeed. That's exactly right. It's a, it's the slow movement. Uh, he may not argue with everything God says, but did God really mean that? I mean, it's maybe he said something like that. That was in context for that time, not yeah. now. Are yeah. You, yeah. I mean, who's going to build a boat and put two animals on it for real? Like, only two? Only two? Uh, yeah, right. So subtlety works. Mm-hmm. Of course. We just read some stats. You can find other stats, but you don't need stats. No, but look at our government. Look at our government. Oh, that's right. The 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 expression when I worked in DC was you move inches you move miles by inches. That's right. You just do a little tick 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 tick. Because over time those inches add up to the mile. Yeah, it's not really invasion, it's infiltration. Mm -hmm. It's the slow movement, it's the long view. The long game. When you said, think about our government, I went a different direction with that because I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was thinking something else like our government in of itself is weird. Mm -hmm. and, and the government is supposed to serve us. And oftentimes they're not serving us. We are at the submission of them. 
<laughs> well, because the the weird thing happened in the last 20 years is now the federal government is the largest employer in our nation. Right. And it's government bizarre. was never meant to be that way. But anyhow, we digress. So subtlety. Satan will say things like, I'm really not real. I mean, you can believe all that stuff you want, but there's no real devil. I'm your friend. You think he would say I'm your friend? I'm here to help. I think he would say he's not real at all. I think that's where he's got people. But I also agree with you. You're not wrong. I think he would say that. I, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. I would say he would use anything cunning, crafty, sly, mm -hmm. to make you okay with getting off the path with Christ. Definitely. He'll yeah. say anything. I'll give you the easy way. I'll give you the easy path. Yeah, not take up my cross and follow mm -hmm. me. Yeah, the easy way. Yeah, and uh, when you read the Psalms, it's always filled with those people who do not follow God, who worship the Baals or or Molech. They always have it so easy in this world. How can, what about us? Especially Jeremiah has been in the breviary lately in the Office of Readings. Look at me. I'm faithful to you, and I'm in prison. They're trying to kill me. What, what's going on here? You have Job, you know, same sort of thing. I give my whole life to you, and... You allow this devil to take all my kids, although he didn't take his wife. Tim Hawkins talks about that. It's really funny. I'll get him. I'll kill all his cattle and his goats and his kids, but we'll leave his wife. <laughs> anyway, but there's these different people who, who cry out because Satan wants you to have a luxurious life in his world. Hey, that's the only way you can honor him. So the first thing I think he does, and again, there's many things he does, but today I'm talking about his subtlety. I'm not real. But then the contradiction is you begin to see and hear signs that he is real because he can't help himself. So those of us who, who've gotten out of jail, gotten away from his kingdom of darkness, I'm one of them, speaking for myself, um, we have experienced what we're moving into called oppression. So there's four ways that the devil wants to possess us, take over us. Now, can he fully possess us, take over where we have no control? We'll let you know in a couple of weeks because we're going to talk about that. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Stay tuned. But today is oppression. Last week we talked about infestation. Can you remind our viewers, our listeners, what infestation is again? I mean, I just love the visual context of it, of having an infestation of termites. If you live in the South, you know, gets in subtle, starts destructing your foundation, yeah. your wood framing without you even noticing. And then one day the corner of your house falls off yeah. or um, an infestation of anything bug related is such an, a good visual. And it's just this bringing in of things into our life and our home and our and our way of thinking that just really aren't real and aren't healthy. Right. So we call it the haunted house stuff. Yeah, haunted house stuff. You may hear footsteps. You may hear a knocking, you know. <laughs> you may hear um, a whisper somehow in no one's home. People would say, well, that's all in your head. But then you might see... Uh, apparitions. Apparitions. You might actually see something or dream of it. And then you hear stories of people in their house and they're, they're the only ones there. And all of a sudden a glass, glass, glass falls, <laughs> a glass falls and shatters. And how does that happen? So that's infestation. And humans are not attacked at this point. It's just the beginnings. They're picking on you. Irritating. Yep. It's just making you aware. We're yeah. here. So now we move into uh, the next the second step, the next step called oppression. This is where humans begin to be attacked. Okay. So there's physical attacks. We talked about Padre Pio, mm -hmm. one of the podcasts, recent mm -hmm. podcasts, how he was beat up a lot. Um, literally he, wrestled with his demons. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Uh, and getting beat up and bruised. And, and then his brothers would hear him uh, crying and wailing and in fear and, of course, they're not going to go in there. <laughs> Can you imagine sleeping next door and like, oh, no, it's happening again. And they can't help them but pray. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to go in and jump in. No, they might even, even see the demon. But that's why we don't remember their names. Yeah. So there's physical attacks that happen to people. Uh, one quick story about that is um, a friend of mine in this area. Uh, she was praying home alone and she was beginning to move into meditation, maybe even a prophetic state in prayer. 
and God was speaking to her. And but she also knew she um, was being attacked, and her back was scratched. Wow! So she, it was it was up in this area. So she just showed my wife and I a scratch. Now you could say, well, she's just making that up. It's all in her head. Well, then you see the scratch. Then you'd say, well, she's doing that, but I'm not sure her hand could get there. Mm-hmm. Then you could say, well, she just went against the wall and scratched it and she's trying to get attention. You could say all that stuff. And, you know, with faith, you can um, try to prove anything, you know. So, but I believe her. That's all that matters. And she wasn't the first person that has gotten scratched. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a net team um, member uh, Net is National Evangelization Team. Um, they put groups of people together, um, about 12 young adults, go out and do retreats for high school and junior high mostly. And all kinds of crazy things happen because when you go and evangelize, the devil is going to go after you. Mm-hmm. So, um, but there was a girl that year that was scratched in, mm-hmm. you know, in her sleep, mm-hmm. big scratch down her back. So uh, physical attacks happen. Uh, Padre Pio is um, the one that we've talked about most. How about sleep disturbances? That would be the n- next one. Yep, I've experienced that one. Have you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What happened? Well, so it was fairly early on in our marriage, and I'm not sure what it was specifically that had happened, but um, I was having a really vivid dream that there was a demon in our home, and... Who knows, it was after some crazy movie I watched or whatnot, but my wife will tell you the story that I sat straight up in bed and I started crying out, the power of Christ compels you to leave. And I and I woke up out of my dream stating this. And in that transition between dream state and wake state, it literally, I would say in my head, saw the demon run out and it was on the ceiling of our of our bedroom above looking down at us mm. and ran him out of the house wow were you scared no i felt totally empowered I feel like when i when i woke up out of that dream state because i did it was like lights were on right now in my head and my 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 all my senses were just like and it was just i woke up saying these words and scared the crap out of my wife. And then I explained to her what I was dreaming about, what had happened. But no, at no point was I ever afraid. So you were consumed by the power of Christ in your sleep. And he, the Holy Spirit, I think what happened, indwelled in you and took over and gave you those prophetic utterances to get rid of a demon. Okay. Because, I mean, how else do you explain that? I've very seldom asked anyone to have help me understand it because it's just, I never understood it. And it's like, well, if I don't understand it, who does? Yeah. I should ask more questions, shouldn't I? Well, we all should. We should. Yeah. Yeah. Reach and, out to people who know know about these things. Yeah. In this particular area that we're talking about possession, I would not say I'm an expert at all. I would say I'm still a novice, but I've had more experiences myself and then working with people than most people that you'll meet. Mm-hmm. I have had, but I, I'm not an expert at all. Right. But that's kind of why we're here with this podcast is letting people become aware. I didn't, I didn't know that you could be consumed like that Mm -hmm. i've heard of people speaking in tongues and being filled with the holy spirit just never really connected the dots that in that moment that was my experience yeah the holy spirit of god i think was just moving in you and that's kind of cool because you get goosebumps yeah (laughs) dude it's a good thing you were baptized amen brother so sleep disturbances another story that uh happened to a friend of mine was uh, the shaking of the bed Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, bed shaking. Hollywood's good for that one. Hollywood is good, yeah. But he had that happen to him and scared the living out of him. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't come up with the name, like uh, an experience that I was sharing with you earlier. He could not come up with the name to help him in the middle of that experience. And finally it came. Mm. Jesus' name came. Uh, nightmares is an obvious one. Oppression. Now we're talking about oppression, ladies and gentlemen. Oppression, again, is humans literally are getting attacked by. Demons. Demons are, of course, fallen angels. As the story goes, uh, you can read about this in Genesis 1 or in Revelations. I'm a Catholic somewhere in Revelations. I think it's 12, but it might be before 12, um, where a, a bunch of angels, some say a third, but a bunch of angels rejected God before the material world was created. That's you and I in the world. So they uh, rejected God, and um, in a way, you could say they uh, Hell was created. 
I don't think hell was ever in the mind of God, but it was created. It's the absence of heaven or love. So these demons now are trying to um, get us to stay or be in their kingdom, right? And um, one of the reasons they attack us is because we get out of their kingdom, right? And we are serving God. So if you begin serving God, these attacks will happen the rest of your life. They look different for everybody. Some people literally get physically attacked by a demon. Sometimes it's just mental depression. He'll we talked do, about that a minute ago. Yeah, like you were saying. So um, one of the, the common one is nightmares, having a nightmare. And you had, had a nightmare. You just talked about what happened. Uh, here's a quick story about nightmares. Okay. Um, I was on Net Ministries in 1993, 94. My teammate, uh, I'll leave her name out of it. Um, she, um, we were in this convent somewhere in Oklahoma. I don't think it was Oklahoma City, but I think it was somewhere in Oklahoma. And, um, and when we walked into the convent, it just felt weird. The convent? Yeah. Felt creepy right away. Not, not like a good feeling. Correct. A bad feeling. Bad feeling. Okay. Creepy. And we all thought it's weird here. Something seems weird. Well, anyway, we were just, we were just passing through the night trying to get back to, I'm not sure where we were going. Um, but just one night stay and, uh, even the sister that I met was off. There was something wrong and we all knew it. And the team came to me and the co-leader and said, something's wrong. I said, well, let's just pray and go to bed and let's get out of here in the morning. Well, um, my, um, my sister in Christ, she went to bed early, like at eight 30 and she couldn't get to sleep. And as she was going to sleep, um, she saw this hand in her mind's eye coming through the ceiling and she wakes up and sees the hand coming through the ceiling and begins to choke her. So this, I believe started in a dream state but it was literally there choking her and she couldn't breathe and she's tried to cry for help. And one of the sisters on our team went in there and snapped her out of it. Then we huddled up and really prayed and said, uh, cause they didn't want to stay there. And I said, sure. you know what? <laughs> I don't know what to do because it's now nine o'clock, nine 30 at night. And so we asked Jesus to cover us with the precious blood. Nobody else was attacked and we got the heck out of there. But isn't that like in the modern era where we live today with Airbnbs and you're going and staying in people's houses and hotels and like you just have no idea what's been there before you. And it's a really good idea to pray and cleanse and prepare your stay to be at peace now and to be quick, protected. Now the quick story. I was in Denver, Colorado back in 2017. And uh, I was wrapping up my uh, nine years with Focus Ministries, great ministry. And um, the first night in the hotel at probably two in the morning, three in the morning, uh, he started speaking loudly in a foreign language. Who? My roommate sleeping next to me. He started mm -hmm. speaking loudly. And it scared the living, you know what, out of me. Okay. So, um, uh, so I end up getting up. And I go downstairs in the lobby till like five in the morning. So I was down there for like two hours, three hours, because I was freaked out. <laughs> Did you talk to him? So I go to bed from five, wake up at seven, and I'm exhausted. I'm wiped out. And I said, dude, you were speaking some kind of African language. He's like, what? I said, do you know an African language? He said, no. You were speaking some kind of African language. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. Well, it didn't dawn on me. That was most likely a demon. Moloch and, or Ball. Uh, or any something. of them. And there's myriads of them. Who knows which one? It was a demon picking on me. Well, I figured it out after talking to him like, oh, no. And what didn't I do? Pray over him. I didn't cover myself with the precious blood. I didn't put any holy water, any holy salt in the room. And for your friend, I mean, if something transfigured through him, like you talked about, Christ embodying me to to say the things I did and act the way I did. I mean, would the demon come into him and speak through him? And he his had sleep? nothing to do with it. He had nothing to do with it. A demon just appeared. 
Now I didn't see anything, but I heard the voice audibly. Okay. It wasn't internal. It was audibly. I heard the voice. But it wasn't your friend speaking. No, it. not at all. Something else. I put it together. I discerned it. Ah, and it was it was something else. Creepy. So, so I, t- I turned to my good friend, Crystal, and I said, dude, uh, I didn't say dude. I said, Crystal, dude, 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 Crystal, do you have any holy water? Because I think I got attacked. She said, yeah. I said, I forgot. So I spread holy water over the door and all around the room. No issues hmm. from then on. Isn't that just yeah, the thing? Yeah, pretty wild. Illness is another one of the ways that we get attacked. It's I probably, in the last few years, the one that's attacked me the most. I'm 52, almost 52, and I have been the sickest of my life these last two years. Whether it's the, you know, the, the COVID thing that's going around, whether it's the flu, whether it's whatever it is, I have not been more sick in my life. So uh, illness is a big one. And, and I think we have to be careful with that one because some people think that they get sick because God's mad at them. You know, why would God let me get cancer? Yeah. Why would God let this happen to me in my life? And What's the answer to that? Well, I try to remind people that God didn't guarantee you were going to be healthy your whole life. He never said you were going to have this perfect life in existence. He said, have faith in me, all you children, and... Being ill can be a test of your faith of where are you putting your your true beliefs and that being sick is not a punishment. It's not always a test. It's just part of the human journey. But there's times like you talk about where people get repeatedly ill. They they just they're just sickly. And those those are different. And I don't want people to feel like we're trying to say things one way or the other because there's a there's a substantial difference between being ill and having to suffer through some of that and then being sick with oppression. Right. So great um, distinction. I'm not saying every time you get sick, the devil is getting you sick. I'm not saying that because there's spiritual things and there's natural things. In the context of this conversation... I am talking about sometimes the evil one can get you sick. Well, and what a great opportunity when you do feel ill to test your faith. Like, Lord, heal me. Allow me to have enough strength to take care of my family today. Or be oppressed and depressed about, oh, I'm sick today. I can't go to work. I'm just, ugh. Again, it's just another gateway. It's another way to separate that path between where are you putting your faith? Are you putting your faith in Jesus to help you through this yeah. difficulty or are you pushing the man's way of I've got to do all these things cuz I got to get better and sometimes you just got to it can be just that simple of just pray for healing I have a cousin in uh Houston Texas she's a healer she's a hands-on healer and so cool. she will go to somebody's house that isn't feeling well or ill and she'll just pray over them and she's had wonderful, wonderful stories and amazing miracles of people who've been sick for days and suddenly, you know, overnight they turn, they get better. So don't don't forget this is an avenue and a resource for your health and spiritual journey too. Oh, that's a great point that you make. I'm so glad you brought that up because you're one way that God can use, uh, you're one avenue God can use to heal you. And don't overlook um, the chiropractic world or oh, medicine. Yeah, it's just the little thing we do. But another way is spiritual healing. Mm-hmm. And I've prayed with people, and my wife and I have prayed with people. You that, told me this amazing story this this summer about healing over the gal whose knee was all buggered up, and you prayed over her, and she didn't have to use the wheelchair for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, where was that? Wasn't that up by... Um, there was someone at Revival that was walking with a cane. And we prayed with him Saturday in the afternoon, and he threw the cane down. Yeah. Spiritual healing. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. But Love it. lots of people don't believe God can heal. Well, you, if you believe in the devil, I mean, why would you think that God can heal? So the old school thought on healing was twofold. Okay. God can heal you spiritually through like Jesus did. But God can also heal you naturally through doctors. But God was the healer. Yes. You're not the healer. No, I'm a conduit. Yeah. Yeah, got to be a conduit. That's actually my prayer every day before I start work is, Lord, allow it to come through me, not from me. 
because I can do so much more with his power than I can do with my own personal. I like the chiropractic world. Yeah, we're kind of a weird bunch, but you know. That's what I like about love you. Love us or leave us. You're, you're different, and I like that about you. I, I've had great success in the chiropractic world. Let's move on to depression. All right. This is so depressing. Let's it talk is. about it. How would you define depression? Depression is a fear of the past, regret, resentment of the past, it's stuff you can't change. That's it. And you wallow, you wade in that. Yeah. You, you just get stuck in that, all the things in the past that you can't change. Stupid. Stop it. Stop thinking about the things in the past you can't change. You can't change them. Move on. Move forward. Be present. Be here right now. And stop doing anxiety, which is all the things that could possibly happen to you in the future because they're not going to happen. And yeah. if they do, what are you going to do about it? Stop it. How do you stop it? Stop. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. Be present. Be where your feet are. Yeah. Be, and if you feel yourself moving into anxiety or depression, stop and pray and go, Lord, help me be present with where I'm at, with the things I have in front of me. Okay. You said the word be present where I'm at. It's living. Uh, so I learned this uh, through Mother Angelica. Have you ever heard Mother Angelica's name before? Um, you're a Protestant. You're a good Protestant boy. I know you might my Angelou. Not. Have you heard of uh, E. <laughs> Uh, I know who that is. Okay, good. Have you heard of uh, the television, uh, the network? I'm uh, <laughs> EWTN. Yeah, you've told me about it. Yeah, she started EWTN in uh, 79, 80, right in there somewhere. Cool story, quick. Uh, I probably shouldn't go into the cool story, but uh, she bought one of these big dishes when she started uh, EWTN, mm -hmm. and she ordered it, and the guy was there to put it in, and... Um, the door was too the door the door was too small, and she he the guy said you're never gonna get that in there. Oh come on boys, come on boys, we'll get it in. So she laid hands on that dish and prayed over it and it shrunk, and they got it through the door and it then it went to the normal size again, and the engineer that was there said there's no way, I know that would not have gotten through the door. But what I learned from Mother Angelica just a really fun story. Read um, Raymond Arroyo's book on Mother Angelica her. Autobiography or biography? I always get it wrong. He wrote it about her, so that makes it's a biography. It a biography. Um, Mother Angelica speaks to depression and anxiety. She said, the reason why people struggle is because they don't know how to live in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Because God is in the present moment. He's not in the past. He's not in the future. He's now, the eternal now. Mm -hmm. So I've struggled with depression as well. Stop but, it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know how. Okay. There, now you know. Stop it. Live present. Well, there was a beautiful girl that I couldn't date, so I got depressed. I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, a couple other ones. Um, relationship troubles, that's a good one to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> the girl that you couldn't get. Yep. Um, I did get the girl I wanted. Anyway, uh, but here's another one. Financial problems, employment problems. Mm -hmm. Moving from job to job, just miserable. Right. But well, isn't that where the devil thrives? Is making us miserable. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. And then saying it's it's... God can't do anything about it. I'm just going to make you miserable. But it's not my fault. You're making yourself miserable. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. One more quick story, and then uh, do you have any stories you want to share quick? No, I've kind of shared as we went along. This has been fun. Yeah, my favorite story uh, about all of this stuff goes back to 1996. Was I was year. at, uh, shout out to all my Franciscan University buddies, uh, men and women. I was still in high school. I loved Franciscan University. The best two years of my life. Net Ministries was right before that. Another great year of my life, but by far the hardest <laughs> year of my life, but the maybe the best. The best three years, Net, and two years at Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio. Uh, anyway, shout out to you guys. I miss all of you. This happened at a youth conference. So what Franciscan University did every summer is they had this conference series. And they had two or three uh, set aside for the young people, high school students. Well, I worked several of these conferences. and um, But this one particular conference was different. Friday morning, it was so hot and so humid, we all went, boy, the air feels weird. And uh, the kids came in, you know, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and the conference started, and it seemed weird. Well, um, that night, 
I, again, I haven't told the story for a long time, but that night it started to dry thunder. I, I mean, dry lightning. We had dry lightning. But the lightning was in different colors, and I'd never seen that before. Have you ever seen that before? Different colored lightning? Yeah. Yeah. Purple and reds and whites, yeah. It was weird. So the next day was even, uh, it, was, it was hotter, it was more humid, and the air felt weird. And that's all I can say, spiritually weird. Well, that morning, um, this gentleman had a, um, I would say a vision that um, God and Satan were talking about Franciscan University. And God gave Satan permission to um, attack Franciscan University, much like the Job story. It's really a parallel to that story. Okay. So the guy didn't think anything of it, and um, but at lunchtime, he went and told the musician. He said, I think I have to tell you this. Well, the day went on, and it was still weird. It was weird outside. That's all I can say. Well, um, Saturday evening was the main event, because they always brought Jesus out in the monstrance, and Jesus did his work. But at dinner time, this musician who just had heard the story of God and Satan talking, he went and told the guy in charge. Now, this is at 6 o'clock about this vision. And so at 7 o'clock, the winds started picking up. And the guy in charge goes to the stage, totally interrupts the speaker, and says, we are evacuating now. And I'm working at the... Um, at that uh, J.C. Williams Center. Um, and um, and I'm being told that 400 young people are coming into my building. Well, anyway, the kids ran out of there scared. And three priests witnessed this. This hand from the sky came down and was ready to grab or crush the big tent where 1,500, 2,000 people were in. And three priests raised their hands and they prayed. And that hand stopped. And then all the kids got out. And this is total Hollywood. The last one trips, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they get the last one up or the last couple trip and fall and they get them out. And the priests put their hands down. And immediately the tent is thrown into this like 200 year old oak tree. Crazy. The next morning, um, we all saw that tent, this huge tent in the oak tree. And even though those kids were freaked out, they still, in the end, uh, had a good conference because they, they settled them down and their eyes were focused on who Jesus Christ really is. You get the last word. Oh, my gosh. Just think of that as a, as, a, as a student running out. You wouldn't even pay attention to how you were being protected and how other people were intervening on their behalf. And how many of us have people in our spiritual camp that are praying for us on the days we forget or we get busy or we're not paying attention and this is where you got to have your community. You got to have your family because even the people you allow into your life, into your home, they can be good or they can be bad. They can, they can make or break the day. And isn't it interesting if you look at cross culturally, how like attracts like, and if you're not careful, I mean, the, the old adage is if you want to be a millionaire, hang out with six millionaires because you'll be the seventh. Well, if you want to get to heaven, hang out with six good Christians, Catholic or Protestant, and you're going to get to heaven too, because they're going to make sure they help you along the way to get there. So find your six. Find your six. I said you get the last word. I guess I lied. <laughs> Here's what I would say. In the words of John, St. John Paul, Pope St. John Paul, be not afraid. You have nothing to fear. When you have Jesus and his name... The demons flee. Amen? Amen. Rock on. Well, God bless you all. Thanks for listening. And may God strengthen the bars of your, your gates. gates. Amen. Hey, thanks for listening to the Glengower Podcast, sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Mission Blueprint is a nonprofit ministry started by Glenn and Jamie to sanctify the family. Our income is donation-based, and we need your help. Please support us financially by going to www.mission-blueprint.org and be a part of our financial team. Thank you, and may God strengthen the bars of your gate.